So let me begin by saying what a deep honor and privilege it is to join all of you this afternoon as we break bread together and as we share experiences on reconciliation. And reconciliation is easier said than done. Reconciliation in situations where deep divisions have existed for many years and in some cases are even generational differences passed from one generation to the next. It's extremely difficult, like I said, easier said than done. As a country, and Senator Coons has put his point across and stated that we moved from a single party system to a multi party system in 1992. And at that time, it was difficult to imagine, and everybody you know, thought that just by changing one clause in our Constitution, Section 2A, and allowing a process of multi-party democracy in itself was just going to be a panacea. Unfortunately, that didn't end up being the case. Because although we entered and opened up the political space that political space wasn't filled by political parties that were either ideologically based or based on any given principles, but rather all it did is to institutionalize the ethnic and clan divides that have been used previously to keep our people apart. So from 1992, which was the first multi-party election, to 1997, these ethnic divides just deepened. No party was ever able to secure a significant majority. And each election always turned out to be a process of ethnic conflict. The only election during that period that ended up with some kind of majority it was an election where my good friend Raila here teamed up with Mwai Kibaki against me and President Moy in 2002 and they gave me a good hiding. So that, was, that was about the only election that we can say was won in Kenya with a majority. Unfortunately, given the situation, once again, in 2007, following the collapse of the then NAC, and again, the rise of ethnic-based groupings, Kenya witnessed her worst cycle of election violence in 2007. That Ultimately, with the intervention of friends and region, especially, an agreement was signed and a coalition government formed between President Mwai Kibaki and Prime Minister Raila Odinga, with a clear aim that once again we needed as a country 
to really look at ourselves. And through that, we gave ourselves a new constitution in 2010 that entrenched certain aspects. One, we needed to look at the issue of devolution and the feeling of marginalization. And we dealt with that through creating a devolved system of government so that decisions didn't necessarily all have to be made up in Nairobi. And we allowed our regions to have a bit more say and access to more resources to be able to decide for themselves what their priorities were. We focused also you know, on a number of other areas, what kind of system do we want to, to run, do we want a federal system, and we ended up saying no, we wanted Kenya to be a unitary state but with devolved entities. Once again, we thought we had found a solution to our problems. We proceeded to the election of 2013, which though not violent, still left Kenya bitterly divided along the same lines, almost 50-50. Twenty seventeen were again almost fifty fifty, which always gave room for people to say, Well, I was cheated out of me, we were robbed of the election, this happens, this happens. And all of this, unfortunately, once again built tensions between ethnic communities once again almost brought Kenya to the brink of chaos. It was at that stage I realized that it, it wasn't possible for us to continue in this manner. Because at the end of the day, leadership is given by the Almighty, not for those who sit the throne of power, but it's for those who we are supposed to be serving. And we had to ask ourselves, are we serving? <laughs>